In this video, we will use existing car geometry to make a CFD domain in ANSYS Discovery. The end result of this video is shown here, where we have the fluid volume ready to be exported to the solver. Hi everyone, I'm now going to take over from Errol's presentation. I'm going to show you a little bit on how to actually set up your simulations and how to run them. Alright, so the program that we're currently in now is called ANSYS Discovery. Essentially, it is a all-in-one program for running CFD and FEA. Uh, in a sense, it means that you can set up the, uh, the geometry, the mesh, the solve, and the post-processing post all in one go. Um, Discovery is also a little bit unique in the fact that it has two different solvers. It has a GPU-based solver and a CPU-based solver. I'll go into the pros and cons of each solver a little bit later. Alright, now what you want to do is just open up your geometry. So I have a pre-made geometry here. Um, it's in space name format, but you can import pretty much any CAD geometry format into here and it'll work just fine. So you just drag it in. Alright, cool. Now we're currently in the Explore tab. So to navigate um, ANSYS Discovery, um, essentially you just need to uh, switch between these different tabs here. So as I mentioned before the different solvers um, Explore is using the GPU solver and Refine uses the CPU solver and if you go all the way down you go to Model um, which is how you modify the CAD geometry. Yep so just on a quick note um, when you import your geometry into Discovery you want to make sure that it's as simple as possible. You don't want to have small faces and complicated features. Small faces will increase the mesh count, which requires more RAM and slows down the time to solve for little gains. So if we scroll in here, we see lots of little faces and complicated curvature and stuff like that. In reality, this really isn't going to affect the CFD solver. Well, the CFD results that much, you won't really see too much of an increase in drag or decrease in drag here. And they make um, the meshing process a little bit more complicated. So normally you have to fit uh, smaller elements there to make sure that you can capture the small faces here. Or they'll just be defeatured in the meshing process. Um, not to say that having these faces is necessarily a bad thing. They can still be uh, resolved using um, this using Discovery. The mesher will still handle it fine. You'll just notice some defeaturing there. It's easier just to remove them during CAD. Alright, now let's create our air domain around the car. So with CFD, you want to make sure that you're modeling the air around the car, not explicitly the car itself. So to do this, all you really need to do is go to prepare and then hit enclosure. And this is a really quick and easy way to create an outer domain around a body. Uh, just make sure that you select all of the bodies uh, that are going to be inside the domain. There's no reason that you need to have everything combined, but it is easier so you don't need to click each individual body. And then you can just click uh, the tick here, complete, and that'll just make our enclosure for us. And if we go back to design, select. Or you can just press escape and that'll clear uh, the function that you currently have. So if you go to pull, hit escape and it just gets and it just removes it. So we can see in our tree here um, that we have our bodies still involved in the simulation. So what we want to do is just hide each one and then uh, we want to exclude it from simulation. So currently it has been excluded from simulation, but if it hasn't been, all you need to do is hover over it. And if it says exclude from simulation, click it to make sure that the body is not uh, factored in during the solving or the meshing process. All right, now that we've created our air domain, we want to make sure that it's big enough to resolve the flow features uh, of the car. So if we look at it, we may want to bring this uh, front one a little bit more forward, just so we're capturing the pressure gradients around the nose here, because we'll expect to see a really high pressure near the nose. And we want to drag the back of the domain out just so we capture the wake behind the car. We want to make sure that we resolve the entirety of the wake before the, the domain ends. Generally speaking, you want the inlet to be about one car length uh, in front 
and the outlet is usually about two to three uh, Kyle lengths uh, behind. Normally you want to just resolve the flow and the region where the flow is uniform is where you want to place your inlets and outlets. So if you have a look at the pressure gradient in the front of the car, or you have a look at the wake at the back of the car, you fully want to resolve these features until they're uniform. And now we want to move the ground all the way up to the wheels. So what you'd expect to do is just move the ground up to the first contact with the wheels. However, if you were to do this, uh, you'll find that you will get very sharp elements um, and they will essentially cause problems with the solver and the mesher. So you will see a decrease in accuracy due to these sharp or skewed elements. So to remove this uh, problem, all you need to do is go to the pull tool, drag it up, and just clip the first bit of the wheels here, usually around a millimeter. It's not an exact science how much of the wheel you clip, you just want to make sure that you minimize, minimize it as much as possible without sacrificing that mesh quality or requiring too many elements to fit in between. All right, now that we've done that, we want to create some fillets on the wheels to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So all you do is just drag the fillet tool. So you click the two edges and then drag and that creates a fillet. Let's make the fillet 0.7 mil large. And let's do the same for the back wheel. We're not going to do the same for the opposite side and I'll show you in a second why. Cool, now I have two sets of fillets on the wheels. Okay. Now if you look at the car, picture it driving down the road. As the car's driving along, it's symmetric about this middle axis. So in CFD, we can cut the car in half and only take one half of the geometry and still get the same result because we expect to see that the flow around the car is symmetric. However, if the car is turning, you no longer have that symmetry axis. So you'd have to consider the entirety of the car. And the reason that if it's driving straight and it can be symmetric, so if we cut it in half, we reduce the amount of time it's gonna to take to solve because you're only essentially resolving half the car. All right, so to split the domain in half, all you need to do Select one of the edges, select one of the faces there, select another face, and then just hit plane. And that will put a plane in between these two faces. And then go up to split body, I select your fluid domain, select the plane as the cutter, and then select the body that you want to remove. Cool. And you can also delete your plane. That just removes some of the clutter. And there we go. We've set up the geometry for a CFD solve.